When you think of Strixon, what do you think of? Welcome back to the Mid-Golf Fitting Room. Jim McCleary here, and we are here to talk about Shrixon. Now, typically, there's pretty much two categories you're going to think about when you think about Shrixon. Number one will be the golf ball, and that's, what they, that's their big primary driver, the golf ball. The other one is the irons, right? The irons. Now, they, they, you know, they have a full line, wedges, irons, hybrids, the whole nine yards, but their biggest press is so far been in the iron department. And if you look, there should be trends sporting the other way, and we'll find that out later. Just so we're all on the same page, I am now a Srixon component dealer, so I custom make these irons, drivers, hybrids, in the way after fittings or whatever we might need. So if you're looking for Srixon and you want something custom in there that you haven't found, you just uh, get a hold of us and we should be fine. Now, <clears throat> there are three, right now, three prominent styles of Shrixon. The first one is the Z Forged. And the Z Forged uh, guys and gals are as right hand only, right? So if it's, it's from a, forged from a 1020 carbon. And as you can tell, it's got nice flowing lines. It is purely a muscle back. A player's club, it has the V sole, albeit narrow, right? V sole, but narrow, and is weaker and a little flatter as most players' clubs are. Now, it has a narrower top line at address. Let's see if we can get this here to you. Narrower top line at address, very, very little offset, just as player clubs should be. Now, it's right handed, I'm not going to be able to tell you much more about that. However, you know, most forgings are going to be very, very soft. Blades are not going to be any different. In typical design fashion, blades are going to have a smaller, you know, sweet spot, but they're made for more precise ball strikers, hence that's how they get there. So that would be the, the Z forged. The next iron is the uh, ZX5, which is kind of unique. Normally you would think it would go uh, blade, no, you know, player's person, and then the forgiving one, but not in this particular instance. Uh, the ZX5 is the is the club with the widest sole. Uh, it is a multi-piece forged club, again out of the 1020, and it has a forged body, a forged face, and then it has a bit of a badging on the back. The idea here is to get more of a spring-like effect off of the iron and the, the face is more forgiving, almost in a cup face sort of fashion. It also has, it sports the wider sole, but it also has the V-sole in it. And as you, in the V-sole, it has a leading edge of one type of bounce, and then the, the trailing edge is a much deeper bounce, so that you can still get into the turf, but yet get out of the turf at the same spot. They've also come back and they've put the little heel notch into the back end, and that is basically, it would be my opinion, they just say, hey, it's a heel notch. Basically, for those guys that are hitting diggers or whatnot, it's a little more relief from something like that. Personally, I think it allows me to bend the lie ankles a little bit easier. So there. <laughs> it has the, the most offset of the three irons. And as in the next set, we'll see that as, the, as we get lower into the set, the offset gets less, all right? So the more offset at the top, least offset at the bottom. The, 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 the lofts on these are gonna be the strongest of the bunch, and they're gonna run right around 61 and a half degree in the lie angle, which is about standard. And they're not, and the good thing about this is not a super long iron, it's in the standard length. And right now, I am, when I got mine as a demo iron, it's sporting the Modus 125, which I really like the, the Modus stuff right now. And it's also going to have the 360 uh, Golf Pride grip on it. The last one right now, the last one is the ZX7. The ZX7 is going to be 
that would just the club that's in between the blade and the ZX5. The ZX7 is going to have a slightly wider sole than the blade, but much narrower than the ZX5. It is also a one-piece forge club instead of a multi-piece forge club where it tries to sport a lot of the weight down at the bottom. Now when we say one-piece forge, that's true, but it's still a multi-piece club in that right on the very end they've put a little bit of tungsten. Normally when people put tungsten at the end of the toe, it's to slow the rotation down. All right, and that's people from overcooking it, hitting draws, low, you know, low shots. So it kind of gets to open it up. Again, in the V-sole where it has a standard bounce in the leading, the leading edge of the club, and then at the back, very, a very steep, uh, steep bounce at the back end. Also sports off the, the relief into the heel of the club. And again, a one piece forged uh, with, it does have some offset, but again, in the middle, this is a big middle of the road kind of club in that, again, in the three through six, it's going to have a, a larger amount of offset, albeit it's still not very much. And in the lower, it's gonna have even less. In fact, I did look up the specs and the difference in offset and the six irons between the five and the seven is 0.3 millimeters. <laughs> so it's not like it's gonna be a tremendous amount, but there is going to be some. Uh, this one is also a little bit weaker in loft than the, than the ZX-5, right? The, this one is supposed to be 28, where the other one is supposed to be 27. So it's not gonna to be too much. However, when I measured them, they were one degree either way. So instead of being uh, 28, this one was 29, and the other one instead of being 27 was 26. And I'm leaving them that way because I want to see how much of a difference there is. Which leads me to a point, there is manufacturing tolerances, and this is one degree either way, and that is a very, very small tolerance, which means that that it should be checked when you get your irons that they should be checked to make sure that they're dead on so if you're at a good if you're at a we'll call it a quality shop they should be able to throw them in a machine bend them as necessary to ensure they're dead on solid and that way it ensures that you get what you've paid for as well we go from a one piece forged in the blade to a one piece forged with tungsten into the zx7 into a multi-piece forged uh, three-piece club in the ZX-5, it, according, you know, great ball striker, better than average ball striker, average ball striker, and that's what we're going to do. So the, so the only thing left now is to hit them and see how it goes. So that was a really enlightening session of hitting two different, two different, two very different clubs, right? So what did I do? Well, I got warmed up and then I hit 15 balls a piece in five 
ball rotations. And then I removed the five worst ones. And there was a couple that were a little bit actually longer that I took out because they were just these ginormous pulls that they end up going longer, but they're so far out of range that I don't want to give you guys anything that would be indicative of like, oh, it hits further and all that kind of stuff, or that it hits, oh, that's really, really short. So I basically clamped down the top and clamped down the bottom in order to give you an average, and so that's what it is. So it's 10 shot averages of each. The ZX-5 with the multiple piece construction Forged body, forged face, the whole nine yards, and it was at least three degrees stronger, came up the winner in the distance category for certain. I like the idea how it got through the turf, even on the matting. You know, there's always that argument of whether or not, oh, you're hitting off a of turf. Well, yeah, I'm hitting off turf, but it's an inch thick. So if I go deep, it will still slow me down, and it has. So what, I do, what happened here? Well, the, the ZX-5 went 194, carry 205 average. So 205 yard, six irons, pretty healthy nowadays, especially swinging at just a little over 93 miles an hour. Now, what the, the real deal here was is that I got a 1.33 smash factor, which is quality of hit. Very, very well done. I will take that all day. Now, the other part here is that I also, the spin rate wasn't nearly as high as we would think that we, we want it to be, but the lofts being stronger, that's what happens. And the, and the lofts were getting higher. So the additional weight that they have at the bottom of the head is allowing you to get these higher launch trajectories with the lower spin rates because of the loft. The Modus 105 shaft, apparently me and this thing are gonna be friends. I was just hitting the snot out of this thing. And it felt good with a slight, just slightly over four degrees of, uh, of attack angle and I'm hitting it down into the middle. And, and now again, you know, just like in those five, there was a few short and there was a few long, and so this was the number. But from a field perspective, very, very comfortable behind the ball. Very, very comfortable. It gave you feedback when you hit them well. It gave you feedback when you hit them poorly. The response to these is when you hit them poorly, they weren't nearly as poorly as you would think. And that's a good thing. Uh, but is it a different feel than a single piece forge? Yes, yes it is. It is not nearly as we'll call it as well a solid number, a solid feel. A single piece, single piece forged head has just a different feel than a multiple piece forged head. Is it bad or worse? No, it's just something that you get used to. The feedback is different. Is bad or good? No, because you're always going to get good and bad feedback. It's just different. Okay. I didn't feel the need to have to turn it over. I felt like I could go right down the middle. As you see the grouping that it did, it, it found the middle of the club. Very, very easy to hit clubs, certainly uh, like that one. Now the, the ZX-7, which is more single, uh, single piece forged and a lot weaker, actually surprisingly came out at 183, 194. So basically uh, 11 yards shorter and basically 11 yards shorter. And we expect that, right? Because it's basically a whole club short. When you're talking, you know, three degrees difference, that is the numbers I expect. Now, the surprising part here is I thought certainly I was just going to be all over the map because of the lower offset and the smaller appeal, but uh, I got a, the lateral was well within the same as the ZX-5, so from a forgiveness point of view, not too much of a change. From a, from a club speed point of view, I was less than, I was right at a half a mile an hour slower I don't know if that was just mental or anything, but the real, the real deal and the give up was the smash factor or the quality of hit. It was a .04 lower, which is a significant number in that, you know, if you're missing, it is going to be more penal because there's less room to move to miss on. That's all. Now, did it hit well? Yes. Yes, it did. It hit well. It's the one piece forwards. It gives you that traditional feedback that you, that most better players are looking for. It, it, on miss shots and on good shots. When you hit a good one, you know, that buttery soft feel that everybody talks about, that's when it is. Now, they don't tell you about when it's, jar, you know, eye tooth jarring when you're off to the back. That's the, the negative to all these, to these nice players' clubs. When you're off, you know it all the way into your eye teeth. <laughs> both of them went pretty straight. Both of them had uh, same angle of attack. They both had a very similar spin although the weaker one had more spin as because it had more loft. 
So we, we did okay there. I like the pattern that I got out of it for being what it was. Uh, I could play either one of these to be sure. Uh, if I was to put this to the true loft, which I believe would be a degree stronger, that I could expect a little bit more out of it. And, and it would still be a club, but it was very, very comfortable behind the ball. Uh, I like the, the taller irons with a little bit more offset and the lower with the lower irons with less offset. I think that's a great plan. Also, I think the idea here for combo setting is all kinds of good things to happen where you could have the, the ZX5 at the top and the ZX7 at the bottom with a little bit of loft manipulation. So I like that as well. So with everything being about as equivalent it is, and what I was alluding to earlier was having the lofts checked, right? Because if this was a six and a seven iron and they were fuller out, they, these, these distances would be even more gapped, okay? And that's the reason why you have them checked when you go and get these things done. So, you know, you go get fit, figure out the right shaft, length, loft combinations, the right head combinations of which... Uh, the the Srix on is right up there with the with the big guns, so don't be afraid. And making sure that when they're built, that they're built to the spec that the the custom fitter told you to be fit to. So overall, nice set of clubs. Certainly a good combo making set. Certainly going to be friendly with the V sole. You can get through the turf and not get too stuck. The quality of the build, I think, is right there with everybody else. I do like the Nippon in that it does go very, very far for me. And, and it may, you know, go get those options for you. Get tested in the shafts that you like. Now, what you're gonna see over here is a subscribe button. And if you would, do that. Subscribe and that way you get more of these when they, more of these videos when they come out. Down here, what you're gonna see is another video that YouTube recommends. And if you would, hit that button and that way you get to see more of what we do here at McGolf. And as usual, let's see your scores. Go low.